I doubled the accuracy of all my AI agents. I couldn't believe how simple it was. In this video, I'll take you from what the heck is MCP to building your own MCP server that can fetch the best MCP for a given task. We are making an MCP for MCPs. I'll break this video down into three levels for easier understanding. Level one, why MCP? Meet Bob, he makes light bulbs. Lately, his customers have been getting a lot of defective light bulbs. Bob wants Slack to ping him the second a defective bulb lands in Excel. Easy, right? Stone Age Bob wires it up the old way. LLM reads Excel, Excel is connected to Zapier, Zapier to Slack, everything goes in a cron job and congratulations Bob, you have made a spaghetti. Excel, Slack or any of the 47 other integration tools change, then the whole thing crashes. Now let's welcome the MCP world. Vendors build the roads with signs. Excel and Slack expose a standard road. Bob can then use an MCP server to glue these roads together and voila, Bob is the new mm -hmm. Edison in town. In one line, MCP is a USB-C for AI capabilities, replacing custom steps with a fixed protocol. Great, so you now understand why we need MCP. Let's go to level two to understand what exactly is an MCP. The use of MCP involves two parties. Number one, MCP server that says, here are my tools, resources, and prompts. Number two is the MCP client that says, great, let me use them. Servers expose capabilities in a standard shape. Clients discover them and call them the same way every single time. No guesswork, no duct tape, pure innovation. TRP, tools, resources, and prompts is the core of MCP. Tools are the actions your agent can perform, SQL query, sense like messages, etc. Tools are usually built on top of APIs. If MCP is the highway, tools are actionable boards displaying dynamic data, like the weather and available parking spaces. On the other hand, resources are read-only stuff, static files, docs, URLs, JSONs, etc. On a road, Resources would be speed limit and no parking signs, conveying local and static information. Lastly, prompts are reusable instructions that the MCP client can pull in. Remember the construction signs that state, take a left instead of right? A prompt is supposed to do exactly that. It helps the LLM to direct in the right direction and avoid pitfalls. The TRP architecture is controlled with highly typed schemas, so the model cannot budge. Level 3. Building an MCP. Practice doesn't make a man perfect, but shipping does. Now we are making an MCP for MCP, an MCP search engine. And to do that, you would need fast MCP. The easiest way to build MCP is in Python. You wouldn't even need your morning coffee for it. Heading back to the developer's world, Python programming. To use this, you would need Node installed, Python installed, and of course, FastMCP installed. Everything will be in the description. To make your first MCP server, import the libraries, start thinking of what you will name your MCP and which instructions you will add. In this case, I have given my MCP the name of MCP discovery server. The instruction can include description and can optionally also include the tools it has, the resources it has, the prompts it has. That reminds me of the TRP framework. It needs tools. Looking at the tools, I have a tool that can get me the response from Smithery. Smithery is a uh, collection of all the MCPs that you can get if you just send a string response. So I send a string response to an MCP API, I get the JSON raw output, and that is my first tool. My other tool, in case there is some information missing from the Smithery API, I can use a simple OpenAI response with the web search to see if there are any other MCPs that I can use. Now, I can also use static information as resource. 
I can use the decorator mcp.resource, make a function inside it. This is just giving me the resources that I'm using. And it's giving me an output of a JSON file. And that's why I have a my time, mine type of application slash JSON. A great part of MCPs is you can make your resources as well as prompts dynamic, templated or parameterized. Here, if I put a source name, I can take that as a parameter and give you answer based on that. So if the source name is Smithery, I, like, I can say, yes, it's a success and Smithery is a trusted source. If it's a web search, I can give the same response, else I don't know what the source I'm using. T done, R done, time for P, prompt. In this case, I don't need a prompt as such, but I'm just keeping a simple prompt. A prompt from for MCP server, the message that says, all right, you are a helpful assistant and then you are helpful in finding MCP servers. Now, it's really easy to run. Here, I'm running it as an HTTPS. The way MCP work is via JSON RPC, remote procedural call. It sends as a JSON response. It responses as a JSON response. And that interaction will happen on HTTP in this case. If I do not use it, if I use mcp.run, it will run on the standard input output. That is the print statements in Python. Now, to test this, I will simply run. Here, you can see that my MCP is running. That's it. That's all it takes to make an MCP server. Now it's running at the local URL and it's completely set up now. But to visualize it, I can use Anthropic's own engine to see how it, how it looks like. So I'm going to run npx model context protocol inspector given by Anthropic's lib library. In this case, if I have this, I can input the link where my code is running and I can start connecting to it. You can see everything is connected. I can list the resources, which tells me that the answer is, is Smithery and I have a web resource here, web search and Smithery. Great, it's working. I can list the templates, validate source. Oh, it's parameterized, so I need to send a parameter. Maybe I can send Smithery, because Smithery should send a trusted response. Cool. Free resources, yes. I'm getting an answer that success. Smithery is a trusted resource. Amazing, it works. I can also go back and look at prompts. Do I have a prompt? Yes, I have a prompt. I can look at the tools. Do I have Do I have tools? Yes, I have the tools. Yeah. List MCP from a smithery. Let's try it out. I'm gonna say something like video editing. Video editing. And I'll send the response. Run tool. Tool success. Yes, I have all the MCPs that is that are coming from smithery that can help me edit videos, peg MCP and other MCPs. I have one more tool, web search. I'm gonna use the same term here, video editing and see if my tool is working. Run tool. Here are the MCP that I can use for editing videos. It's coming straight from OpenAI. Perfect, your MCP has been ready, it's working and now it's tested. Fantastic. It's time for a live demo. You have made an MCP server, but you have to connect it to an MCP client. And here I'm using cursor for that. But does it really work? Cool. Without the MCP enabled, I'm going to ask it a question. Give me MCPs on video editing. Let's see what it does. Okay, it has access to my current files. So looking at my uh, directory, looking at files, looking at, oof, it, did, it didn't even need. It's just giving some vague answers that doesn't even make sense. It's making a new Python library. Oh, I'm going to go to a new page. I will stop this and I will enable MCP Daddy because I called it here MCP Daddy. Cool. You can see it already has two tools enabled and one prompt. I'm going to ask it exactly the same question. Give me MCPs on video editing, but now it has access to it. Cool. You can see it has started listing the function. First one being list MCPs from Smithery. It already got a lot of responses. Now it's doing another tool search from the web search. And yes, it is again getting all these answers. And voila, 
you have the best MCP servers for editing videos. The difference was 100 times. I hope it teaches you how to work with MCP. See you for the next one.